C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. This is what musical notes are called in English. Accidental notes, the black keys, take the suffix sharp or flat. For example, the natural note G can become G sharp or G flat, adding an accidental. A pretty smart system. Starting from the note A, the other notes follow an alphabetical order. But not every country labels notes in the same way. In German-speaking countries, Scandinavia and many Slavic countries, the note between A and C is called H instead of B. Accidental notes take the suffix is instead of sharp or s instead of flat. The natural note D becomes dis or des and so on. With one little exception. A flattened H is not called H flat or Hess, as one might think, but B. Yes, just B, without any suffix. What a perfect way to make life more difficult, right? And this has led to plenty of misunderstandings between musicians across borders. The classical German system was not designed for, say, writing jazz chord symbols. So most pop and jazz musicians prefer to use the English system, or sometimes a mix of both systems. But the note B refers to two completely different notes, depending on which system you use. In general, countries that speak Romance languages don't use letters of the alphabet, but rather syllables. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si, Do. A system called Solmization. The note Do was originally called Ut. These labels are actually the first syllable of each line in the Gregorian chant Ut Quiant Laxis. Here's a map of Europe. As you can see, in only a few countries, the note following A is called B. In most countries, you either use the solmization syllables or follow A with H and call its flattened version B. Please use the comment section to help me fill the gaps here. But what's the origin of the note H? I've often heard a story of a callous monk in the Middle Ages who made a little mistake copying a book by hand, accidentally turning the letter B into H. This story is not just fiction, but it's still more myth than history. And anyway, it doesn't explain why a flattened H is then called B and not H flat or something more straightforward. The real story is far more complicated. But to get to the truth, we'll have to go all the way back to the Middle Ages. As far as we know, the music of the Middle Ages was strictly monophonic in the beginning. That means no harmony lines, no chords, just one single melody. But soon, a Joan or Borden note was added to the melody, a constant bass note that supports the melody, kind of like a vamp does now. At least, that's what contemporary drawings of Joan instruments from that era suggest, like the bagpipe or the hurdy-gurdy. In the history of Central European music, this was the first step towards polyphony. At the time, only octaves, fifths and fourths were considered consonant intervals, which means notes that sound nice together. So the next logical step was adding a second voice that followed the leading voice in perfect parallel, transposed mostly by a perfect fourth or fifth, the so-called parallel organum, used in Gregorian chants. Here's an example of a combination of both techniques from the 9th century. Now we arrive at some time around 1000 AD. Independent voices that create counter-movement or follow a different rhythm haven't been discovered here yet. Neither has the modern notation system, the one used in this video. Medieval music notation begins with so-called neumes that are fairly vague and merely indicate the approximate course of a melody. The first keyboard instruments, in the form we know today, with seven wide and five black keys, won't appear for another 500 years. Besides, 
the 12 tone system doesn't even exist yet. Instead, they're still using a tone system adopted from the ancient Greeks, in case you ever wondered why the modes are named after ancient Greek tribes. This system has just 7 tones, which correspond to R7 naturals. The note we call H, or at least some of us do, is not around yet. When you play two voices in parallel motion, transposed by a fourth, as shown in the first example, you will run into a problem. At one point in the seven tone scale, between F and B, the interval between the notes is not a perfect fourth, but an augmented fourth, a tritone. In some circles, this harmonic clash was considered the devil's interval and had to be avoided. Therefore, a new chromatic note was added between A and B. Nowadays we know this note as B flat, but its first name was fittingly called B molle, Latin for soft B, because its purpose was to soften the effect of the augmented fourth. The original note B, correspondingly, was then called B durum, hard B, and represented by this symbol, a sharp edged version of the lowercase letter B, easily to be confused with the lowercase h. The triton problem was solved. And with it, we took a giant leap, from a 7 to an 8 tone system. The note B molle was, air quotes, the first ever black key. The idea to split the 7th degree of the scale originally belongs to music theorist Guido D'Arezzo and his hexachordal system. As long as sheet music was drawn up by hand, both symbols could be used. But once the first movable type printing systems were born in the 15th century, musicians had to make do with the standard printing types of the Latin alphabet. So the letter H was used for B durum because of its visual similarity. As composition techniques became more and more complex, slowly leading towards the 12 tone system, the old symbols were adopted to display all the other altered notes. B molle became the flat, B durum became the natural sign and the sharp. In the German-speaking world, these new altered notes all took the suffixes is and s. But this was not applied to the original note B retrospectively, and that's why the note H exists to this day. Funnily enough, in Romance languages that use the Do Re Mi system, the flat is still called B molle, which relates back to the same circumstance. The note Sol, for example, that's G to us, can become Sol diesis or Sol bemolle. By the way, in German language, the keys major and minor are called dur and moll. And fun fact, the term Kirchentonarten, which literally translates to church keys, is still being used for the different modes. A subtle reminder of their original use in the medieval religious music tradition. I hope this video answered some questions for you. Feel free to comment. Thanks for watching.